for this session. I'm joined this evening by a few of my colleagues who will be speaking with you about the Young Scholars Program. And so I'm gonna um, have them introduce themselves and then we'll proceed with today's session. Good evening, everyone. My name is Trina Phillips and I am the program coordinator for Columbus. Good evening, my name is Janisha Finch and I'm the program manager for Dayton. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sam Robinson and I am the program coordinator from Toledo. Hey, good evening. I am Tiffany Payavlis and I'm the program manager for Youngstown. And so on your screen, you should see a, a screen that says that you're here to learn about the Young Scholars Program. I hope you all are in the right place. Um, we wanted to, we put this presentation together because uh, we know that you may be getting some correspondences from your school representatives and school personnel learning about the Young Scholars Program. And so um, this is your session. We talk about the Young Scholars Program every day. Um, I wanted to just go over a couple of Zoom items and then introduce and then invite you to communicate with us as necessary. Um, the first thing is um, just a couple uh, items related to us using Zoom. Um, right now, you all are muted. Um, that just allows us to, to get through the presentation. However, the chat function is open and will allow you to type in questions in the chat function. Um, cameras on, cameras off. Uh, we, we work with young people, and so we were used to talking to black screens. We're going to present whether we see your faces or not, um, but we welcome you to turn your cameras on and to join us into your session this evening. And then if there's anything that we say or that we mention that is, is, is giving you a burning, like I need to have this question addressed immediately. Um, as we are having our conversation with you tonight, someone is always gonna be monitoring the hands raise function. Someone's gonna be monitoring the chat room. So you can communicate with us. Again, we work with young adults all the time. And so we are accustomed to stopping what we're doing, answering your questions, clarifying. Um, and so you would not interrupt us uh, by asking us questions throughout the presentation. If there's something that um, we're gonna stay on a couple minutes after we finish and conclude our session, if there's questions that you need to ask us privately or for clarification, uh, we can do that too during, um, at the end of the, today's presentation. So we're gonna get started. Um, I'm gonna start by telling you a little bit about the Young Scholars Program. Uh, we are, have actually been in existence for 33 years. We just celebrated um, our 33 year anniversary here recently. Um, and what our vice provost likes to say about the Young Scholars Program is that it really keeps, this program in itself keeps the university true to its land grant mission. Our purpose is to identify talented, um, young first generation students from around the state of Ohio in our nine identified cities and to support them with gaining access to a prestigious university. Um, I have been, I've had the honor of serving as the executive director for the Young Scholars Program for the past two years. And then before that, for four years, I served as the assistant director. Um, but one of the things that we talked about, we talk about constantly in, in this program is being a partner to you and to your family as you all pursue um, being the first or your student pursues being the first person in the family to ascertain a, a college degree. Um, you are joined this evening by a couple of us. We're going to do um, some presentation. We'll do the presentation together for with you. But there's actually 19 people on our team. And so in the, each city, in each of the nine YSP cities, there's a program manager or coordinator that lives and works there in a the city. Um, many of and quite a few of our program coordinators who work in the cities right now are actually graduates of the Ohio State University and active participants um, in the Young Scholars Program, their YSP alumni. Um, so uh, Eric Fletcher in, A in Akron, Ohio is a YSP alumni uh, and uh, Natasha Diaz and Lorraine is a YSP alumni. And we have um, two colleagues who work here in Columbus in Hale Hall, where we're located um, on the campus of Ohio State University. Um, Mr. Britt, who works with the, um, helps us with our students and Mr. Zamaripa, who we call our money man, helps us with help, um, supporting um, college affordability and the scholarship itself. And then we have an undergraduate team that consists of um, Ms. Carson, Ms. Mumford, um, Alvian, and Tuary, who also are alumni of, of the Young Scholars Program. And so many of them have come to um, Columbus from the respective YSP city, graduated from Ohio State University, and then returned to work full time for the program. And again, in total, there's about 19 of us on our team that will partner with you from now through college graduation 
And so when you think about it, that is for the next eight years, you will see someone um, from the Young Scholars Program and from the Young Scholars team assisting you with making just good choice decisions about pursuing um, your education at The Ohio State University. And then now I, my colleague Trina is gonna talk to you about the pre-college uh, curriculum and the pre-college program. Hey, thank you, Dr. Thomas. Um, so here is a, a slide that presents our college curriculum, um, the pre-college curriculum. And so we meet with our students, the program coordinators and managers, we meet with our students once a month. And for example, for Columbus, I meet with my students on Wednesdays. Each of us have different evenings that we meet with each grade level. And in those sessions, we are having discussions. Um, we're talking about academic planning. Um, we are talking about be, becoming ready for college. And we're using this and emphasizing community development. And we use the eight components of College Board's college and career readiness. And so during those workshop themes, the ninth grade, they are talking about becoming a scholar. And that is not just within the program, but within their school, within the community, just becoming a, a scholar overall. Our 10th grade theme is understanding social justice and my civic responsibility. And I'm sure you guys are aware of so many social justice issues that are going on right now. Our younger generation are becoming very involved. They're creative. Um, inventive and so we are talking to them about how they become involved in those types of things. For our 11th graders, who am I, who do I want to be? So we start this conversation with their career and professional development and what is it that you need to develop for the career that you're looking for, right? Um, and we even start talking about majors a little bit just so that students, they may think about majoring in psychology, but what career field does that land them in? And then our 12th graders, our seniors are preparing for that change. So what does the transition from high school to college look like for them? And having conversations with them about that and answering questions as that relates to moving on to higher education. Our next slide. We also have one-on-one -on -one meetings with our students. So in addition to the monthly cohort meetings, the program coordinators and program managers are conducting one-on-one -on -one meetings. And we consider these to be holistic meetings. And that's because we're talking about everything. We're talking about college advising and we're talking about their classes and their teachers, but we're also having conversations about mom and dad and sisters and brothers, their boo, their cat, their dog, all of those types of things, because we understand as a program that the things that happen outside of the classroom affect what happens inside of the classroom. And so our team utilizes Microsoft bookings. And so this is really easy for our students. They can go in and they can click that. They're able to see our availability. And then when they're available and we're using Microsoft Teams, Zoom, or they can do that over the phone. So we also have a scholar reading series. And last year we just had one grade level do it and we enjoyed the conversation and so did our ninth grade students. And so we are doing that for all grade levels this year. Um, and the, um, they're kind of in the order, I guess, if we go from left to right. So the Dear Martin is what our ninth graders are reading right now. The other West Moore, our 10th graders, all American boys, our 11th graders, and then our seniors are reading educated. And so we have had, during our workshops, um, they have had the guided reading. I believe each one of our grade levels are right at the end of their book. Um, and so we've had discussions, they have questions that they answer, they've been given quizzes. Um, and we use a platform called Scarlet Network. And so Scarlet Network is very similar to the platform that our college students use. And so this is also like a secret way that we're preparing our scholars to be ready for college as well, because this is the platform that if they decide to go to Ohio State, and then there are other universities that use platforms um, like this as well, um, that they get used to navigating what that looks like. And so this has promoted really good conversation 
They have been analyzing their thoughts and how they feel because several of these stories are very relevant in the time that we are in right now. And so with that, I am going to turn it over to my colleague, Janisha Finch. Okay, so now you see uh, what we call our pre-college life cycle. And actually, Ms. Trina touched on it a little bit where you see the curriculum focus for each grade level. So each grade level has a curriculum focus. Each grade level will have a summer program and each grade level will have a campus visit. So for ninth grade, when the students are accepted, we have a student orientation with both them and their families. Their curriculum focuses on becoming a scholar. And then we just completed our freshman foundation program um, last week. So we about, yeah, almost a full week from where we completed that. And with that, the students were able to meet with faculty and staff on campus. Um, well, we weren't on campus, but faculty and staff from campus. And um, get information and participate in workshops uh, in their areas of interest um, and what we could offer for faculty. Um, you see 10th grade, we will be doing that one actually next week and understanding social justice and civic responsibility. They have been working on a PSA project. So those will be presented during that time as well as them exploring other topics. 11th grade, um, their visit is a day in the life of a scholar, which usually they would shadow a scholar um, and be right there with them on campus. Unfortunately, this year we won't be able to do that. Um, hopefully things will be back open next year. We can, can, can uh, continue with that. Um, and then as seniors, as they prepare for their transition and make their college decisions, we bring them to campus for a college signing day. Next. And so here are our um, expectations of you and the student if you're accepted into the program. Um, scholars are required to attend all scheduled programming and experiences. I like to stress that everything is mandatory. Um, they will take an academically rigorous course load, including honors and advanced placement, uh, maintaining that unweighted 3.3 GPA in, other, in order to be eligible for the YSP uh, scholarship award. Of course, exhibiting positive behavior inside and outside of school and taking an approved math course um, every year of their high school year. We like to stress including your senior year because we know some students start early in math, but we want them to be well versed and well prepared um, for that as well. And also and for our parents, um, your expectation of course is participate in annual programming that we do have some programming for parents that we ask you to participate in. Um, ensuring that your students, when we're in person, have that transportation to be picked up and dropped off on time. Right now, because we're doing virtual, um, we ask that you, you know, ensure they have the proper technology and to um, provide them, provide us with access to their um, academic records and things like that as needed. Um, next. And so this explains the YSP award a little, a little bit. Um, it is a generous need-based, you see that's in red, stress need-based scholarship to attend The Ohio State University. Again, they must uh, complete that rigorous coursework, maintain that 3.3 GPA um, in order to be eligible for the scholarship. So all students will have to apply for FAFSA, FAFSA, I'll say it wrong every time, but it's the free application for federal student aid. And that way their financial aid package will consist of federal and state grants, work study program, and then our YSP scholarship award. Um, again, they are expected to still sustain that high academic achievement. Um, the, and so this is where we uh, get you to understand that the YSP scholarship is not a full ride. So going back to applying for FAFSA and then um, it being based on your needs. It's awarded for eight semesters, which is equivalent to four years of college. The amount of the scholarship is determined by each family's unmet financial need. Um, after your federal and state is awarded. So each family's amount will be different. Um, no amount is generally the same. I see Ms. Dr. Thomas is putting in the chat approximately that the award is approximately uh, 15,000, a um, little over 15,000 a year. And um, it's important to know that when scholars become inactive, that means they're not actively participating as a part of that requirement, or if they fall below that unweighted GPA um, by um, August 31st of their senior year, then they will no longer be eligible for the Ohio State Young Scholars uh, Scholarship. And now, Mr. Robinson. 
Okay. Um, so this evening, I'm going to walk you guys through the YSP recruitment and admission process. So to be eligible for the Young Scholars Program, um, applicants must reside in the state of Ohio and be enrolled in a YSP approved public school. So as we kind of highlighted earlier, um, earlier on, the uh, nine uh, school districts that we are in. Students also must be high achieving eighth or ninth grade students with earned grades, mostly A's, couple B's and C's and some of uh, the core academic subjects. Qualify as a first, first gen college student status. Meet all YSP income guidelines. Submission of complete online application that includes report cards or transcripts, attendance records, a requested essay written by the applicant, and supported documentation if requested. So if at any time we needed any information just to kind of confirm what you shared, we may request it. And also we are also requiring a completed teacher, school counselor, or principal recommendation form. So how to apply. So there's two steps in this process. The first thing is applicants must complete the YSP application. And this was the first year that we actually launched our online application. And one thing that we did learn about the application, if your school, um, if a student is applying and they're creating an account, if their school um, email account is uh, does not uh, actually work outside of the school district, then they have to sign up using another email address. So uh, best advice, maybe you, uh, mom, dad, parent or guardian, you may want to use your email address to create that account. We just don't want something to happen where when we send follow up emails that they may not get it because we are outside of the school district network. So we just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that. Um, applicants must write and upload a short answer essay of about 200 and 250 words typed using a 12 point standard font. So when you think about 200, 250 words, that's about a page, right? Solid page. Um, the applicant will require the name and contact information of their school counselor and a recommender. So the school counselors, they'll receive a link to upload student report cards, transcripts, attendance records for the current academic year and the previous academic year. And this is all done through our online application. So once the student is going through the application and they identify who that school counselor is, they'll receive a link to upload that information. The recommender, uh, a recommendation form is sent to them and is required to be completed by a teacher and a core subject. So, or they can have it completed by a counselor, principal, or another school staff that has knowledge of the student um, that can uh, kind of verify their students' academic strengths, their weaknesses, you know, even some of the goals or passions that they may have for themselves in the future. So those recommenders, once again, they'll receive a link with the recommendation form. They would just have to complete it and submit it on their end. And step two, after the online application is complete and everything is in, we have a, um, and we identify those students who are eligible for the YSP scholarship, we'll actually invite them to have an interview um, with our YSP selection committee. I can't now stress. Now I will turn it over to. <laughs> Go ahead, Thank Ms. you, Tiff. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just gonna say, I can't stress how important the essay portion is to the YSP application process. It allows us the opportunity to um, get to know the applicant better. It kind of provides us insight into uh, any barriers or challenges the student has, um, lets us look at um, you know, fortitude and, and how students ha may have overcome uh, challenging times. It also gives us the opportunity to kind of you know, really just look at the student's uh, writing style as well. Um, so, as Sam mentioned, uh, each student applicant will be asked to write a page, essentially, um, about 200 to 250 word essay, and it must be typed and it must have a 12 point standard font. What I think is pretty cool is that applicants would choose from one of the prompts below, which are actually prompts taken directly from the Common App. So these are actual college admission uh, essay prompts, which I think is, is again, is, is pretty cool. Um, our seniors actually um, chose uh, one of these uh, topics to write about when they applied to the Ohio State University. Um, 
Again, I want to stress that we strongly advise that students have a teacher or another adult review their essay prior to submitting. And just briefly uh, going through these prompts, uh, number one, describe a personal or academic challenge you faced in the past and how you overcome it. You could describe a current personal or academic challenge you're facing and how you're working to overcome that. You can discuss an accomplishment, an event, or a realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others, or describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? So you can kind of see these essay prompts really, again, provide us insight into the applicant and allows us to get to know the student before we actually get to know the student. Income guidelines. So why is P income guidelines? Where do these numbers come from? Um, these are actual 2021 US federal poverty guidelines used to determine financial eligibility for certain federal programs. So if you were to Google this, um, the US Department of Health and Human Services website would pop up. Um, and as you can see, the YSP, we aim to support students and families with demonstrated financial need. What is important to note that if you are selected to participate in an interview, you will be asked to provide proof of income. So the YSP income guidelines below, um, an example, you can see uh, a household size of five, the income should not exceed 42,952 per that household size of five. Um, another important thing to note is that we're saying that, you know, please make sure your family meets the stated income guidelines before starting the application. But um, we do have the opportunity, if you have any questions, because this kind of gets into um, a, a gray area as far as, well, what it, what, who's considered in my household? What is the household size and things like that too? You know, please ask us. Um, we wanna make sure that any child who is eligible to participate in the program um, have the opportunity to apply. So if you have any questions at any time, you know, please make sure that you reach out to us. Applications are available now until April 15th with that application deadline being April 16th, 2021, like no exceptions, April 16th, 2021. Uh, we will review these applications through um, May, 2021. And again, both the applicant and the parent or guardian um, are expected to interview as well if you are selected for that process. That will also happen in May and we hope to have final decisions between the end of May and June, 2021. You're muted, Dr. Thomas. Dr. Thomas. As many times as we've had meetings, I would be talking while I am muted. Um, and so that concludes our information, our brief information session about the Young Scholars Program. We know that your students are receiving information from their schools and their counselors right now about the program. And we wanted to share with you um, a, a more about the program so that you can understand completely what it is that your student is applying to. It is a great opportunity. Um, I'm going to allow you all to unmute yourselves in case that you wanna ask a question um, to our, our, our co um, colleague panel. And I see a question from Michelle. Um, to yes. me, I'm gonna ask this question of you and if you can respond to it. It's, respond to it. it says, as far as income, do you have to include child support even if it stops when they turn 18? I'm sorry, what would you like me to do? Oh, no, Michelle, I'm asking your question to, um, to Tiffany. It says, as oh. far as income, do you have yes. to include child support even if it stops when they're 18? Yes, and, and the reason why we do that is that we kind of also fo um, follow along guidelines for the free application for federal student aid. So uh, when students complete the FAFSA, that information is also um, required of the FAFSA. So we are also requiring that information as well. But it uh, that wouldn't be my income when they were college bound. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, right. No, that's understood. Do they take that into consideration or no? Absolutely. Okay. So even though it, it, that might put me over the, the mark, they would realize that that wouldn't be there when they were actually yep. going. 
It, when, when we do a financial review, um, what we'll do is we'll um, take a look at, uh, it's something that's called a FAFSA forecaster. And so um, we will give it to our financial um, person, financial right? <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to further review. Um, and, you know, he would kind of make those final determinations, but um, there's basically a calculation that he that he does. And it's a percentage, you know, for example, um, let's just say that the income guideline is five thousand fifty thousand and two, but you're fifty thousand and three. Mm -hmm. You know that, you know, we, we kind of make certain allowances, if I may say that, Dr. Thomas, um, you know, that as long as you're not extremely well above and beyond that, um, that income guideline. Okay. I hope that helps, Michelle. It does. I do have one other question, though. My, the counselor at the school recommended both of my children apply. Mm -hmm. Kids in the same grade. And, uh, but when I got on to start the process, it doesn't seem like I can get to another applicant in the same from my login. You're correct. So you would have to have a separate login for your second student. So just start over with a and create a different account? Yes, unfortunately, yes. Okay. Okay. That that solves that mystery. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Good luck with your application. Thank you. Um, YSP21 asks, is it possible to get a full ride even though it's not a full ride? And so basically, um, I'll answer this question. Um, the way that the Young Scholars Program scholarship is set up is that it meets 100% of students demonstrated need. So whatever that FAFSA says that the family can or can, cannot contribute to the student's um, financial aid award is how we will go about and how the government and the state will go about awarding your student a scholarship. Is it possible for all expenses to be covered? Yes. We have many students who graduate from the Ohio State University with zero debt. Everything has been paid for. Once the student matriculates or comes to the Ohio State University, there's additional scholarships they, that they can apply for because they're young scholars to pay for some of the other expenses that students come into when they get to the university, like studying abroad, or if there's emergency expenses and things of that sort, they can apply for additional aid. So it, if your question is, is it possible for a student to graduate and have all their, exp their expenses paid for through the Young Scholars Program, it is possible, but it's very dependent upon annually upon your family's ability to contribute to their, um, to their, their educational expenses. And then there's another question. And Tiffany, if you can go a little bit into what do you mean by household size? Can you answer that question? Yes, I can. I'm okay. sorry. I lost uh -huh. you guys for a moment. Okay. So household size is typically who is in your household. So when you look at a parent or guardian, um, let's just say if it's um, mom is in the household with her children, with her five children, she provides over half of their support for all five children. The household size would be six. Mm -hmm. If there is, um, let's just say mom and dad, right? And three children, that's a household of five, as long as they provide over half of their, of the child support. Um, another example that I could give is what if it's mom, grandma, and three children. Mom provides over half of the children's support, but doesn't support grandma. Grandma is just living in the household. That's a household of four. So it has to be um, people in the household that uh, the parent or guardian provides over half of their support. Mm -hmm. And then Sam, can you talk a little bit more about students using their school emails, that, that statement there? Yes. Um... So if you're if you go to a school and you are using whether it's the iPad or a Chromebook provided by the school and you have a, a school district email, as long as you are able to receive emails from outside of the school district, then it's fine. Um, we found that some school districts they have uh, blocked um, students from receiving like emails from outside of the school district. So if it's someone not uh, not your teacher or counselor, you wouldn't receive that email. So with the online application uh, being created the way it is, 
you may receive follow-up emails saying, hey, you um, submitted your application or hey, you started the process or reminders or things of that nature. So you wouldn't be able to receive those emails from a YSP for us to online application if your school district is blocking that, um, that email from actually getting to you. So we wanted to put that uh, disclaimer out there just so that you were um, aware of that. And, and in that case, if somebody already started the application, they put in their school's uh, district's email and they, um, they noticed that they haven't been receiving any information, we can identify that as well. And we can reach out and um, ask that you change that. And then Ms. Finch, can you talk a little bit about where our summer programs take place? Yeah, so this is a <laughs> tricky question right now. Um, Pre-COVID, like probably most everything, um, our summer programs took place on the campus of The Ohio State University. So we would bus our students from every city. Um, in most cases, two or three cities would share a bus. So for example, I'm in Dayton. We would share our bus with Cincinnati. They pick up Cincinnati, they pick us up and we'd all travel to campus. Um, and stay on campus together in the residence halls with the students, um, our summer staff that we hire, and then us as full-time staff, we stay right there in them twin beds too, um, <laughs> for that, you know, joyous week or two that we are there. Um, so we are always there with the students on campus. Um, they would, you know, participate and do activities on campus, you know, and learn, learn the area, go to the classrooms, meet staff um, there. Um, what we've had to do and adjust this year, um, for example, we only did our uh, Samuel Du Bois Cook Summer Academy for our seniors. We stretched it out to two weeks, um, but it was online. So every day for what, like four to five hours, depending on the activity, the students logged on, um, just like you're here on the Zoom. And we did activities with them, put them in different rooms and um, allowed them to do that. Our goal was to not, not stop our programming, not stop our services for students. So um, looks like we might be doing the same thing this summer. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, what, 2022? Yep. We can be back in person. <laughs> and then Ms. Trina, can you talk about how students, um, transportation for students to and from like monthly workshops, does YSP provide um, transportation to students to and from workshops? So no, we do not provide transportation um, to our students. Um, our workshops are scheduled um, ahead of time um, and we stay consistent with our days and our times so that students and parents and caregivers know, you know where the, the meeting is gonna be and what time. And so um, I've had students who, um, we have students who uh, carpool. So we like to tell students to connect with another student and they can carpool. So one parent can bring them and another parent can pick them up. And then also I've had students who um, catch the Coda bus. Um, I've had a student who, have, who has Ubered before. And so, um, yes, yeah, students use different resources to get to um, the location of the workshop. And then Trina, uh, there was another question that I would like for you to address. And that is, what if a student um, is admitted to the Young Scholars Program and then while in high school, they are admitted into another program and they decide to go to another university, can they still graduate from YSP as a high school senior and go okay. to another, another school? Okay, so once you're accepted into the YSP program, um, our desire is for you to um, attend Ohio State University. The Young Scholars Scholarship is for the Ohio State University Columbus campus. And so if junior year or senior year, you decide that you're no longer interested in attending Ohio State University, then you can withdraw from the program and you would be able to go to the university of your choice. I think that answered it. Uh, so does the program connect with one of the YLS if you want it? So no, um, we don't have any connections with um, CCAD or Columbus School for Art and Design. Um, all of us who are on the line and as well as our um, other unit staff, we have lots of connections in higher education in general. Um, so for instance, um, I'll give the example of uh, Sam who had a student 
um, a couple years ago who got accepted as a Gates Millennium Scholar and she decided to go to New York University um, after she graduated from high school. Sam has a contact, he met a contact at a conference and he made contact with that conference um, colleague and he was able to connect that student to um, um, her in, in, at NYU. And so they were able to make those connections and she was able to get into her program. So a lot of times when we find out that our students are wanting to go to other institutions, then we will um, go into kind of our network and we will connect that student to a representative at that alternative institution to, talk, to try to make a seamless transition from Ohio State or from YSP to that other institution. Uh, we want to see our students successful. We are, at the end of the day, we are a college access program. And so we want um, our students to go to college. For the past five years, 100% of our students, re, um, whether they, they decide to attend Ohio State University as an undergraduate student or they go somewhere else, have gone to college. All of our students do go to college. Um, we know that we have students who are you know, um, into the arts and design. And so they decide to go to other schools. We have students who are athletes, they decide to go to other schools. And so for us, we are asking that, you know, we want you to come to Ohio State, but in the, in the end, if you decide to go to another school, then we will make the connections to make sure that you have the connections at that other school so that you have the assistance to make the transition from high school to college. Mr. Um, I had a, 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 call, a, a message um, and it says, if you do not meet all the qualifications to apply, is there another program in addition to YSP to get our children involved in? And so the answer is yes, but not right away. So we have a sister scholarship program at The Ohio State University that is called the Moral Scholarship Program. And students can apply for the Moral Scholarship Program upon during their application process to Ohio State University. And so literally as you are completing your application to Ohio State as a senior, a graduating senior, you would check, I want to be considered for diversity-based scholarships at the U University. And that will take you into our moral scholarship program. That is a tuition-based scholarship for students from Ohio. And so we do have other programs like that um, at the Ohio State University. And then depending on what city you're joining us from, Ohio State University, um, Columbus, we have a, um, so for my Columbus um, families joining us tonight and for the Canton families joining us tonight, we have an upper bound Wooster and an upper bound Columbus. And so upper bound are also alternatives um, for, for students who may be looking at other programs. And then I know that Akron and um, if I'm not mistaken, Toledo has also like college access programs too that we may be able to refer you to. A lot of times what will happen is because we are all applying for these programs around the same time, we may even talk among ourselves like, hey, we had too many candidates and we don't have enough space or there's a person who doesn't quite qualify for our program. You might wanna reach out to this person. We tried to do those referrals for you too, um, to the best of our ability um, so that you can look at other college access programs. Um, so the question says, so if I'm the only young scholar in my family, does that mean my household size is one? Tiffany, can you just talk about household size one more time for me? Absolutely. So household size is anyone living in the household that uh, the parent or guardian supports um, over 50%. So that would be, um, that would be any children um, under the age of 18, that also includes adults up to the age of 25. Um, and I think even older than that, really, that I, I think that the most important thing to know about household size is that the parent, parents or guardians um, provide over half of their support. And I will add to when you go into the, the YSP application, it's going to ask you how many children are in the house between the ages of zero and 21, if I'm not mistaken, then how many adults are in the household between 22 and 25? So it asks very specifically on the application. And so you'll end, we'll be able to calculate those numbers out for you as well when you apply. But there's questions on the application that help you to um, address how many people are actually living in your household. I was kicked out in Um, I see, um, 
from uh, candidates or not candidate applicants. Sandu, you want to ask a question? Do you want to unmute yourself? I don't want to mispronounce your name, Tuba. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I hope I um, my question was that you mentioned our group classes. Does that mean we have to take call courses in high school? So you, your line broke up just a little bit. Can you ask us your question one more time? Yeah, yes. Uh, I was asking, do you mention rigorous courses? Does that mean you have to take college um, courses through high school? Oh, college. So we want our students to take the most rigorous classes that are offered at their school to prepare them for going to college. Some of our students decide that they are eligible once they meet eligibility requirements to take college classes at high school. Some of our students take um, honors or advanced placement courses. Some students take international baccalaureate classes. Um, some students will take the college classes. It's up to you. You will have the guidance of one of the program coordinators or managers to help you to understand and think through like what are the best classes for you to take as you begin to prepare for going to college but it's not required to take a college class in high school. Right, that, that was my question. Okay. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Ms. Trina, can you post that link one more time in the, um, in the chat room? We have one more family ask, how can they get access to the application? Yes, and I also saw that there was a question about what's the difference between undergraduate and graduate. Okay. Are, do you want you want to answer that, or you want me to answer that? <laughs> she muted herself. I'm, I'm sorry. I was I was going to tell you that and then post the link. So okay, you'll post the link and I'll answer the question. Okay. All right. And so um, when a student is pursuing their bachelor's degree, then we consider that student to be an undergraduate. Um, and so that is your first four years of of college. You are considered an undergraduate student. Once you graduate from your from with those four years um, and complete your bachelor's degree, you will decide to go to graduate school or professional school to get your master's degree. Um, I went and I went back and I got my doctorate degree. I was considered a graduate student, right? So I've already graduated from my four years bachelor's degree and I'm pursuing advanced education. And so then we become graduate students. And that's the difference between a bachelor, uh, an undergraduate and a graduate. Typically undergraduate is four years, five years, six years. Some folks we've seen seven years. <laughs> and usually your master's degree is a two year degree. Some professional programs like law school, medical school, dental school, those are three to four years, depending on where you decide to attend. Are there any other questions that we might be able to answer for you to help you to be better educated about how to apply for and participate in the Young Scholars Program? Um, I had one. Sure. So when you apply, does it like, does it, I can't really explain it. So when you apply, does it tell you to um, use a, um, what is it called? I can't say it at the top of my tongue. You know how you have to sign in? Uh-huh. So when you so when you go into the link and whatever, say I'm using my school computer for the um email. So how would you do that? Like say say I'm using my school computer, but for the email when you use like my phone or my dad's, mm -hmm. is it like how would you do that? Is it something you have to do extra or so when you, um, the first thing that you want to do when you access the application is create an account. Once you've created an account, we encourage you, if you have a school email that allows you to receive emails from people outside of your school, then you can use your school email. But if you know, like for instance, Sam, students have 900 email accounts, right? Is that the right um, terminology? Okay. So Toledo Public Schools does not allow students or people outside of TPS to email their students. So we're saying don't use your 900 account, use like your Gmail or Yahoo um, account to create your account. Once you create your account, you can come in and out of that account until you're ready to submit your application. So the first time that you create your account, you can be on your phone. And let's say for instance, you stop and then the next day you get onto it from your computer, 
you have that account. So that'll allow you to go in and out the application as necessary. Does that help you, Helen? Yeah, thank you. Uh huh. And then I think, um, Trina, I'm going to. All right. Yep. And then Trina just posted the link to take you right directly to the application. There was also a question from YSP21. When I was reading the application, it said something about a package sent every semester. What is that? Um, YSP21, could you, could you explain a little more? I'm not sure. Does anyone else maybe know what that might mean? I'm, I'm not sure what, what you mean by package sent every semester. Okay. They're going to get the paper just to refer back oh, to it. Oh, got you. Okay. Yeah. We will stay on here to continue to address any questions that you have. Um, we have, if you go to our website um, or if you, um, I'm sure your school counselor has already um, contact you, contacted you and given you our recruitment information from the from our program that has the coordinator for your city, their information listed there. Um, I, if you guys want to, Tiffany is from Youngstown, Janisha is from Dayton, Sam is from Toledo, and Trina is from Columbus. Um, I work in the central office. If you all could just um, put your email addresses in the chat room um, in case anyone wanted to email you and ask you any questions about the application, that would be helpful. Um, otherwise, you you know you can con email us or contact us at odi.osu.edu um, or ysp at osu.edu. I'll put that in their email too, and we can address your questions too. Um, if you if anything comes up, we're going to put all of this in the chat room, and you can take that down there. Otherwise, we appreciate you for spending part of your evening with us. Um, we uh, appreciate all of the questions. It is a, we are meeting our goal. We're doing exactly what we set out to do, um, which was to inform you about the Young Scholars Program, to encourage you to apply. This is just a dynamic program, and we are excited to receive your application and to begin our partnership with you moving forward. Thank you.